I want to get into today's show, folks, and I want to share with you why I think Ukraine are shaping the battlefield and the media landscape for a nuclear disaster. And you might be watching this and thinking about this, thinking, well, why does this even matter? Why, why should I pay any attention to this? So let me just kick off with a, a video I played last week, but I just edited this just slightly for the most important points. And I think it really highlights exactly why you need to pay attention to this. So this video is from Thursday, Wednesday last week, my time, so Tuesday last week, US time. So let's take a little look. Putin could be tempted to use a tactical nuclear weapon or just as likely try to destroy the main nuclear power plant. Both actions would have dire consequences for the health of Ukraine, but also surrounding NATO nations. Poland is at immediate risk if the use of tactical nuclear weapons or destruction of a nuclear power plant causes radiation to spread, as almost certainly it would, causing significant human harm. This is not a kind of reckless or panicky resolution. It's based on fact and science, and it is meant to send a message to Vladimir Putin and even more directly to his military. They will be destroyed. They will be eviscerated if they use tacti tactical nuclear weapons or if they destroy a nuclear plant in a way that threatens surrounding NATO nations. Article 5 is there for a reason. And our message is to those around Putin that if you do this, if you follow his order, if he ever gives it, you can expect a massive response from NATO and you will be at war with NATO. I can't believe that NATO nations would allow their countries to be irradiated by a nuclear attack emanating in Ukraine, not, not to consider that attack on the uh, neighboring country and NATO writ large. Putin could... Putin. All, all of that sounds really dire and dark and scary. I just want to unpick what Mr. Blumenthal said there at the start. He said he has... Putin may use a tactical nuclear weapon. By the way, there's no such thing as a tactical nuclear weapon, right? It just means a smaller nuke is what he's saying. He may use that or he may blow up the power plant. And notice how they say consistently blow up the power plant. They're consistently saying that. They're shaping the media. They're at a press conference and these two Washington hawks are saying that he might do that. But the reality is I might do a lot of stuff in my day today, but you have no idea what I may or may not do. And he's speculating. And then a little bit further on, he says, this is based on fact and science. Well, what fact and what science? Because you just said like less than 30 seconds ago, he may do something. He may use a tactical nuke or he may blow up the power plant, but it's based on fact and science. So is fact, you know, what, we, what the government has said about facts and science in the last couple of years, I just can't believe any of it. You're just saying whatever the hell you want to say to to create a narrative that you want everyone else to follow because people just see the headlines. And I'm gonna show you these headlines in just a second and join the dots for you and why I think this is closer than ever before. So when I rewatched all of that and I've been looking at what's happening in the media in the last couple of uh, days, the unspoken truth is, I believe that they're shaping the battlefield for this to actually happen because there's no way that the Ukrainians are going to break through the Russian lines. It doesn't seem like it. it doesn't seem like they're going to break through the Russian lines in the south unless they have air support. And the only way for them to get air support is to bring NATO into the war. And I think the NATO commanders actually understand that in order for the infantry to move forward and the armor to move forward and take those positions without extraordinary losses, because there's just not that many Ukrainians left to go on the offensive. If there's 10 or 20,000 of them to go on the offensive, you, they can be a very, very effective force so long as they've been put together with combined arms. And combined arms means air, artillery, and armor. It doesn't mean, and engineers as well, right? It doesn't mean just engineers going forward to blow a minefield and sending tanks up and then infantry in, in maneuver warfare. It won't work. 
because the Russians have got aviation to stop that and they've got, they're dug into defensive positions. And if they, they're going to take a three to one loss inside of the, on the offensive like that, there's no way the Ukrainians are going to break through those lines. And if they, even if they did, they're going to take significant losses. So I believe that they're shaping the battlefield for that. And the reason I say that is because just in the last couple of, um, in the last couple of days, the Serbian president came out and said this. So this is the president of Serbia. He said, now I expect a big offensive by Ukraine in two directions, one towards Bakhmut in the east and a much more significant one to Urgadar and Melitopol in the south. So that's just south of Zaporizhia. I think that they have prepared several dozen brigades, so 10,000 or so people, and will break through the Russian defences in this region. Now, I don't think so. I think no. they've prepared the brigades. I think they're ready to go, but I think they're going to get their asses handed to them. And I've been saying for a little while now, the problem with all of this is I believe that this is the last throw of the dice for the Ukrainians. And part of the reason I think that this is the last throw of the dice is because I'll show you a little thing I saw this morning about what Dmitry Medvedev said about this war. So he said, Russia's Medvedev says the standoff with the West is going to last decades and the Ukrainian conflict is going to be something that is permanent. What? What? How on earth are we going to end something that is permanent? Is, is, is it just going to be like what happened in Donbass and Luhansk in the East where they've been at war literally since 2014 and the Ukrainians are shelling you know, civilians in that part of the world because the military, military are taking refuge amongst that population. And, you know, if you want to target the military, then we're going to blow up that house. And in the process, they're killing lots of people. So my, my worry is that the NATO summit in Vilnius is coming up in the next couple of days. And in order for them to be invited into NATO or get some sort of invitation or some, we need to show some sort of progress. So we need to do something. And that's what the Serbian president was saying, that I think it's going to happen in the next couple of days. And my worry is that when they go on the offensive and start doing that, we're talking about the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. So I just wanted to show people a couple of pictures of this and just remind you of what it, what it is. So there's six, there's six turbines in there, right? And if you look to the right of the picture, you can see the cooling ponds and you can see the water coming out of the cooling ponds. And to the left of the picture is where all of the storage goes for all of the old spent fuel rods. But we know from uh, the the dam blowing up, this is actually before the dam blew up. And the big thing on the bottom right, the big square on the bottom right is the cooling pond right, where all the spent fuel is. And now after the dam is blown up, this is what it looks like. So this is the before and this is the after. So all of the water is gone. And if I zoom into the picture for you, that's the before and this is the after. So you can see in the before shot how the water gets into that cooling pond in the top left, or sorry, the bottom left of where the cooling pond is. You can see there's a little gap in there and they can pump the water in there from the outside as well, of course. But now that there's no more water left in the river, there's no way to get water into the cooling pond. Then they've said that, look, there's enough water there to last about uh, a month without it actually making any difference. And they've come out in the last couple of days and said that they've got the ability to pump water into it now. So it's gonna be okay. But Here's the, here's the problem with all of this, folks. The Ukrainians continue to say that the Russians have mined four of the six reactors and they've parked trucks full of explosives in four of the six reactors. So everybody's saying, well, these reactors can take a, a big hit. They could take a direct hit from an artillery round and nothing's going to happen to them. And that may be true. But if there's vehicles parked on the inside of the reactors, that's, that's going to be a problem. So the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, this little article here I've got um, says is from the 30th. So this is from five days ago now. They've said that there's, we haven't found any indication of that. So you're saying that the Russians have mined the actual power plant itself. Well, we've got people there saying that no, the Russians haven't mined it. So here's an independent body going against the grain of what the Ukrainians are saying. And they're going against the grain of what Blumenthal and Lindsey Graham are saying there. So they're, they're independent. They're like, no, the Russians haven't done it. S stop saying that. Then they haven't done it. So they haven't mined the cooling pond, the big, this, this cooling pond here. They, ha they haven't mined that. And no, they haven't mined the reactors. That's what they're saying. So 
when I look at the additional parts of the media, these are some of the things that I see. So I just want to show you some of these headlines. Russia planned to blow up Zaporizhia nuclear power plant has been drafted and approved. Burdenov, so that's the Ukrainian chief of Ukrainian military, warns of a dangerous ex escalation. So th these articles are all from the last two days. So in the last two days, this is what they've been saying. So my question to, to you, ladies and gentlemen, that are listening to this and watching this is, do you think that the Russian, do you think for a second, for a nanosecond, that the Russian military, someone in the Russian military goes, you know what we should do? We should rig the power plant to blow because if they come and take back the ground in this stupid counteroffensive they're talking about, we should blow up the nuclear power plant. Is anybody in the Russian military saying that? No, no person, no sane person in their right mind is saying that. And the Ukrainians are saying, well, we told you last year that when they took the dam that they rigged the dam to blow and now they blew the dam. I don't know, man. I, I just, okay, dam, it's water. Okay, cool. Nuclear power plant. I think Ukraine and Russia have got long memories when it comes to Chernobyl. I think they know what the result of that would be. And if they blew up four of the six reactors that were there, it would create a nuclear catastrophe that, of the scale and the size that we've never, ever seen. But I think that Lindsey Graham and Senator Blumenthal want America and NATO to enter the war yeah. so they can use their air force to shape the battlefield there so the counteroffensive goes ahead so the, the Ukrainians can take back Crimea. But I don't think it's as easy as that or is even as simple as that. Even if they did blow up the plant and that all happened and the air force came in and started doing that, I think the Ukrainians are still going to get their asses handed to them. It's just the escalation is ridiculous. Now, if I just click on some of these other articles, it's, it's like Russia is reducing its present at the presence at the nuclear power plant. So they're saying, again, the Ukrainian intelligence chiefs claimed that staff have been told to relocate to Crimea and military patrols have been scaled back. Well, maybe that's in anticipation of a counteroffensive and the Russians have intelligence to say, hey, let's get out of here before they come and kill us all. Or is that in anticipation of a nuclear e event. And now around the Zaporizhia area, there's a whole lot of activity getting ready for a nuclear event. So they're training for it. So the picture that you see there, it says rescue workers and police officers attend anti-radiation drills in case of an emergency situation in Zaporizhia. So I, I look at that and think, is, is this thing hot? Is all of this staged? Is it real? And then there was, I couldn't find the video. I saw it on another YouTube channel, but I couldn't dig it out for the life of me. And I couldn't really use that video because the guy that was talking was standing in front of it. They, the Ukrainians created a propaganda video that said, Russia is about to blow up the nuclear power plant. And so this guy, um, his, his channel is Canadian Prepper, but Canadian Prepper stops the Ukrainian video midway. And he goes, oh, look, that's the urban prepper. So there's a fella in a gas mask, but it's from the Urban Preppers channel, yeah? And he's doing a review on a gas mask, like an NBC gas mask. So the Ukrainians are creating these propaganda videos from content from an American prepper. And then a, a little bit further on, another two or three seconds into the video, there's the Urban Preppers daughter looking like, oh, scared, all of this. So first of all, you're using somebody else's content to create your propaganda videos. And I'm sure the urban prepper doesn't want to be drawn into Ukrainian propaganda. And then you're using his kid in there as well. Or whatever, man, you know, it's the, it's the internet. That's what happens if you put your kids out there and you put your content out there, someone else is going to use it. But I, I look at it all and I think this is all staged. These photos are staged. That's a professional, a professional photographer has taken that photo. No one has just snapped that with their iPhone or their Android phone. That's a professional photo that someone's got going on there. So if we go on a little bit further and it says here, Russian forces begin to flee Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Ukrainian defense intelligence. So once again, from five days ago, this article, the Ukrainians are shaping the media landscape for something to actually happen. And they're starting off by saying the Russians are leaving, the Russians are leaving, the Russians are leaving. Well, hang on a second. Just let's just let's just be real for a second. The people that work in the nuclear power plant there are not Russians. They're Ukrainians. The people that live in the Zaporizhia area drive around to the power plant and go to work every day. They live in Ukraine because the power plant is in Ukraine. 
they're not Russians. But you just see the headline, Russian forces begin to flee. So what is that? The, the guard, the infantry that are there, the armor brigade that, that is there, you know, as a security detail, are they leaving? Maybe, but you're making it sound like all of the staff that work there, that are Ukrainians, are Russian and they're now leaving. So you're using language and words. And the unspoken truth is this is all a psyop. It's a psyop in the event that something happens. And the minute that it happens, everyone's going to say, Ukraine blew up its own power plant. No, we've been telling you for weeks now, for weeks and weeks, we've been telling you the Russians rigged it, the Russians, the Russians, the Russians. And I'm like, I, I don't know, man. And look at this one. The Russians may be preparing to trigger the nuclear power plant explosion. And here's the next one. Russia can remotely blow up the power plant after handing it to Ukraine. Zelensky saying that. Like, what do you what do you see when you when you're hearing this, Ed? What, what do you think? Is it all bullshit? It is all bullshit. Uh, listen, uh, for several reasons. First one is Lindsey Graham said that well, uh, this could be a disaster. It would affect Poland the most because they're right on the border. Well, I just refer. I just look at my map. And Crimea is a lot closer to this power plant than <laughs> Poland is. And so is Russia. It's a lot closer so, than Poland is. <laughs> so is, Right. And the prevailing wind in that part of the world is from west to east. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so that, Russia's not going to blow this up because they're going to have Chernobyl. Moscow is not that far away, really, uh, mm. uh, you know, from there. So, I mean, St. Petersburg is further, but Mo Moscow is closer than St. Petersburg even. Uh, but uh, no, so I don't buy this idea that, that Russia would want to blow this up at all. I think that that listen, Lindsey Graham he is obsessed with Putin. He just he's always hated this guy, uh, and and Lindsey Graham largely went along with this uh, Russian hoax with Trump uh, because he hated Putin so much. He wanted mm -hmm. to, to blame Putin, so he's just he's just obsessed with uh, with Putin, and so I, I think these this. Uh, press conference was all about finding an excuse or to justify find, they're trying to find a justification for nato going in that's it and and they introduced so the the whole press conference was about and i cut out the first part of it but it was about introducing legislation to say that if a nuclear disaster occurs you don't have to use a nuclear weapon but if they blow up this power plant, and that's why they're very careful in what they're saying at that press conference. And they continue to say, if he blows up the power plant, they must have said it like nine or 10 times between the two of them in a two minute video, then that's also going to trigger Article 5. And, and it seems to me like those two people are in cahoots together and are planning to do something like this. And what's the thing that they could do that would cause the least amount of problem? Well, that's not blowing up the reactors, that's gonna cause the most problems. The least problem that they could cause would be blowing up the side of the, the cooling pond and all of the water leaks out of the cooling pond and then all of the um, spent fuel rods are exposed and all of a sudden the radiation is leaking. That's probably the, the, the most controlled thing that they could actually do. You know, I, I look and think, are you, have you rigged the reactors? Are you really going to blow the reactors up? Man, because if you blew up four of those reactors, that would bring the full force of NATO into it and then we are literally in World War Three, And I look at that and just think, whichever way you try and skin this cat, whichever way you look at it, they're shaping the battlefield to blame Russia for the destruction of the power plant. Look, blame Ukraine in case of any emergency. Russians tell Zaporizhia nuclear power plant personnel. There it is. There you go. So they're, they're trying to, well, they're, the way you describe it is they're trying to get ahead of the narrative and the way you describe that is they're shaping the narrative before it actually unfolds in anticipation of something like this going on. Well, so I, I, when I come back to this picture here, this seems to me like the most plausible thing that they can do. So if you look on the on the right hand side of the cooling pond, you can see the, the six reactors. They're quite small in the picture because the satellite photo is, is high up, but it wouldn't be a stretch to actually destroy the side of this dam and, you know, to rig it with some explosives and well, not the dam, the cooling pond, but to rig it with some explosives and to get all the water to leak out of that, in which case all of the um, the water leaks out and then the radiation is exposed. And I, I just think that all of this will bring NATO into the war properly. And that's what Lindsey Graham wants. He wants that. Yeah, and yeah. that's what Zelensky wants yeah. as well. Okay, let me ask you. Um, 
what's the benefit to Russia right now having a nuclear reactor? Is Russia getting any of the electricity that's being produced by this? Well, I, I was as I was doing the research and grabbing all those screen grabs yesterday and I was putting that together, as far as I could tell, the whole reactor had been shut down and had been put into the, the whole plant rather had been put into idle mode. And then this morning when I was looking through Telegram, I saw an article saying one of the reactors had been turned back on and it was producing power and it was producing electricity. Oh, who's, so getting when the, who's getting the electricity? Ukraine. Yeah. So Russia isn't. So what is the benefit uh, for Russia in having this guy at all? Well, they're just holding the ground, right? They're hulk, so they own the left side of the of the river of the bank there, and that happens to be there. So they okay. own the ground. They're not well, going to hold the ground and give Ukraine a little enclave of their own territory like that. Okay, well, okay. okay. So I've got a little solution for this issue. Let me run this by you, and let me see what you think. All right. So if I were Putin, or if I were an advisor to Putin, I'd say, you know what? You could you could gain some real bonus points, some real brownie points with the West. If you invited them to come in with a peacekeeping force, like the the UN's famous peacekeeping force, right? Say, all yeah. right, you guys. So within this three mile diameter around the, you know, you guys are in charge of it. So so Russia won't won't have it, and Ukraine won't have it, and you guys just maintain, make sure that nuclear power plant is nice and safe. It's neutral um, territory. Yeah, neutral territory, right? That way, Russia. That way, if something can happen, uh, Russia can't be blamed. You know, uh, and so far, put and Putin would look like a, a, a reasonable guy. He would look like that's how that's how they would get ahead of the narrative that the Ukrainians are trying to create, right? Because the the Russians, uh, I would say, the Russians are, are just normal, reasonable people. And on the other side, they'd be like looking, thinking, why would we ever blow up our own power plant? These guys are crazy. They think that we're gonna, they're going to blow it up and then blame it on us. And then then I think the. The Ukrainians looking going, oh, the Russians are going to rig it. They're going to blow it up. Like, I'm, I'm just like, n n nobody is going to blow up the power plant. Whoever's blowing that power plant up is doing it on purpose to bring NATO into the war. Yeah. Yeah. So who stands to benefit the most? The only people that benefit out of the power plant, pl power plant being destroyed is Ukraine, not Russia. So why would Russia ever do that? I'm it's not, just insane, I, man. So just bring in a neutral party. Let them, uh, you know handle it and then it's off the table uh i mean well that's that's how putin could solve that problem right yeah i would think uh well he the the neutral party that he brought in was the iaea international well, atomic he, energy agency they've come in and said yeah everything's all right here there's, yeah. there's no explosives here what are you talking about they mine the outside of it but they can't control the perimeter